All right, well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Life Application Bible Study. My name is Alicia Lytle, aka Lady Pastorpreneur. I am a pastor at Excel Church in Northeast Ohio, where my husband, Pastor Charles Lytle, is the senior pastor. And we're so excited um, to be able to bring this ministry to social media so that we can include all of those that have an ear to hear and so that we can all come together and study to show ourselves approved workmen that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I'm excited that we're going to divide God's word together tonight. So get your Bibles, get your pen, get your paper. And we're going to take some notes and we're going to just flow with the Holy Spirit and see what God wants to do tonight. So as you saw from all of your advertisements, the things that have come to your social media pages, as well as to your email, if you're on my mailing list, is that tonight's topic is help wanted. So if you know anybody who's been looking for a job, you might want to let them know, wait a minute, they're talking about a position that is available. Um, so you want to come, you want to be a part of this, you want to jump in on this broadcast. Now they're going to be surprised when they find out what type of position we're talking about, but that's okay. We know they're going to be interested when you let them know that that is tonight's topic. And so yes, tonight our topic is help wanted, but as many of you have probably already figured out, the type of employment position I am talking about is much different than maybe the types of employment positions you're accustomed to seeing. You know, normally, you know, we look in the ads, we look in the papers. Um, do we still look in the papers? Do people still look in the papers? I'm not sure. But normally we look for positions. Um, we look online probably now. That's probably the way they do it now. And we try to see what is available. And what I need you guys to understand is that there are positions that God is seeking to fill as well. And the way that God is filling these positions, he is using people from every walk of life. And I need you to understand that he's seeking you as well. And you might be thinking, oh, no, 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 he's not seeking me. Um, you, you have to understand, I, I, I already, I got some things that I'm already working on. I'm not available. I don't have time to do whatever. I'm not even sure what the position is. I just, it doesn't sound all that tantalizing. But before you make up your mind, I want you to spend this hour with me. And I want you to hear a little bit more about the position before you decide that you don't want it. So uh, know what you're turning down because I'm telling you, God is an amazing God, and when he is offering something to us, it's something that we need to really take note of and something we really need to hear. And so for some of us, maybe we've heard this before, but we're going to hear it tonight in a different context, and I want you to dive even deeper and see what it is that it's going to mean for you. So let me tell you a little bit about some of these positions. Some of these positions are... Um, in places that you may not ordinarily think that God may be looking for someone or that he may be trying to feel. But I'm gonna tell you tonight, these are positions where um, you're very much so needed. We're looking for people in government, amen? We're looking for people who are going to be able to, to, to serve God and to, to make righteous decisions and to hear his voice and to lead with integrity and righteousness in every realm. So don't limit this position that I'm talking about to being something that you're anticipating is maybe only in the church. But this is a position that God has that you can feel even in the government sector, both the federal government and the local government. Um, so think about your legislature. Think about your judicial branch. Think about your executive branch. Think about all the different branches of government and where people serve and where people have leadership and rule over other people. God is looking for people to fill positions there as well. Now let's think about your community for a second. Locally where you live, God's looking for people to serve here too. He's looking for people and, and jobs that you're probably thinking are not in any way related to um, a spiritual component. But hairdressers, daycare workers, um, nail technicians, managers, business owners, people who are going to show the love of Christ, people that he can use in a mighty way to touch someone else's life, people who will have access 
to people that sometimes pastors won't have access to. They may never step foot in a church, but indeed they may step foot in your salon or in your business. And God is looking for people who can serve him there as well. And of course, the obvious, God is looking for people who will serve him in his body, in his church, in his place of corporate fellowship. Um, and not just in ministry where you see a pulpit ministry, but God is also looking for people to serve in all types of ministries of help. A lot of times I tell people when you come into a church and you see a void, um, it's easy to say, oh, well, this church doesn't have A, B, or C. But maybe God's showing you that void because you're the person that can fill it. You're the person that can serve in that capacity and help to make that ministry more excellent and glorify your heavenly father. So think about those positions that are vacant, positions that you've looked at and said, wow, I notice we don't have this ministry or I notice we don't have this going on. Maybe God is waiting on you and using you to fill that position. So God is looking for people to fill positions. But let me tell you something else. This is a position that um, I want you all to think about because whether maybe you're not called to fill a position in an office or to, to start a business or to do any of these things that I've said so far. But let me talk to you for a minute about a position that we all, no matter who we are, no matter what walk of life we're from, let me talk to you for a minute about that position. So let's go to the word of God. I'm going to try to share my screen with you so we can look at the scriptures together. And then as we do that, I believe that we're going to get to see a little bit more about this position. Okay, so hold on, let me make sure I'm screen sharing correctly. And then I'm gonna check and see if you guys can see. I told you we were trying something new tonight. So thank you for being patient with me as I am making sure that um, you guys can see what it is that, all right. So tell me, I see it, I see it on my end. Let me make sure, I know there's a little bit of a delay. I know there's a little bit of a delay, but hopefully you see it on your end as well. So I'm looking to see, can you see my screen everyone? Yep, 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 yep. All right, you can see it. All right, so here's the scripture I want us to start off with. It's coming from Luke chapter 10, verse 2, and I'm reading from you out of the New Living Translation. Do you see it? All right, amen. It says, these were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Hmm. So you mean to tell me there is a position and there's not enough people to fill all these positions, that the scripture is telling me that the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Now let's take a look at this next scripture here. Okay, when I'm screen sharing, let me just make sure I'm doing this the correct way. All right, perfect. So when you're screen sharing, I learned something new. You have to hit a different button. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20. Is this easier for you guys than having to try to flip through your Bible? It took a little bit more preparation, but I figured this might be a little bit easier for you um, to accommodate the type of ministry that this is going to have to be. I want this to be able to reach everyone everywhere. So I'm hoping that this will give you the ability to follow along or really read the word with me whether you have a Bible, own a Bible, or near a Bible or not. So here's what it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Okay, so this job is the job that I really want to focus on for a minute. Because this is the job that no matter who you are, if you're watching this, this job is for you. This job belongs to all of us. It's not reserved to one certain group of Christians. It's not reserved to the ministers. It's not reserved to any particular sector that you could try to bring and break apart. This is for all of us. We are Christ's ambassadors. And he is making his appeal through us, through us, Ginger. Through us, Tammy, he's using us. Kiana, yes, he wants to speak through us. And as we're pleading to people, come back to God. I mean, in the little ways that we're doing it, as we're on social media right now, and as we're sharing, 
And as we're inviting, that's our little subtle way of saying, come back to God. I know I haven't seen you in a while. I know you, I know, I know some things happen and you said, I'm not, I'm not ever coming back to church. I know, I know that, I know, I know they didn't treat you that nicely. I know, I know, I know, I know, and I, I understand you kind of had a little falling out with, I get it, but don't, don't, don't turn, don't turn your back on God. I mean, that was man, that was people. People will disappoint you, but you, God is using you to draw them back to him, saying, you know what, you don't have to come to church right now, but listen, I just want you to hear this word. I just want you to study this word with me. I just want you to see you know, or hear what it is that God wants to say to us on tonight. I believe God is speaking to us tonight. And so he's using you because he knows that I'm going to have a limited sphere of influence. I, I know a handful of people, but he knows that you know someone and you know someone who knows someone and they know someone that knows someone. And together, collectively, we are all his ambassadors. And the position that he needs us to feel is to go and to call other people and to say, hey, come on back. The Lord has need of you. Now, I want to share something else with you. Matthew 28, chapter 16 through, uh, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Again, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. And as you know, I always use New Living Translation when I do Bible study. This scripture said, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, many of us know this as the Great Commission, but this is the Great Commission. This is the great call. This is the great job opportunity that all of us are being asked to feel. Help is wanted. The scripture said that the, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Help is wanted. Help is needed. Jesus said, we've got to go. i got to work for you to do. You've got to make disciples. You've got to go and baptize people. You've got to go and, and bring them into the kingdom of God. You've got to do this. And don't you worry, I will be with you always. Oh, no, 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 Jesus, you don't understand. You can't use me. I mean, you don't know my history. You don't know my background. You don't know what I've done. I, surely you got somebody else you want to use for this job. You, me, I'm not qualified. I'm not the one you need. That's, that's for Pastor Alicia and them. You know, mm -mm. I, me, I, I'm good, right? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. You don't want to know. You, you, you don't even want to, you don't even want a tip of the tragedy that Pastor Alicia was before she gave her life to Christ. Let me tell you something. God wants you, and he knows all about your past. He knows all about the dirt you did. He knows all about your weaknesses. He knows all about your flaws. And in spite of all of that, he wants you. Let me show you something. I'm going to prove it to you. This is a scripture. It comes out of chapter um, 3 in Romans. I'm going to read for you verses 23 through verse 26. So I know it's a little bit of a delay, but hopefully y'all are getting it and you can follow along with me until you can see the screen. But this is what it says. This is what the scripture says. If you have your Bibles, we're in Romans, we're in chapter three, verses 23 through 26. We're in a New Living Translation. And if you don't see it on your screen in a moment, you should once it delay, the delay catches up. But this is what it reads. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glory. Hmm. Let me read that again. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Let's just stop there for a second. Um, I understand that you're a little hard on yourself because you know things about you that nobody knows. But Keep in mind and remember, God knows all. So it may be something that you're, 
you're thinking about or that concerns you that you know that I don't know. Maybe your spouse doesn't know. Maybe the other people who know you don't know. But trust and believe. God knows. But God also has given you an understanding that you're not alone. You're, you're, not, you're not in this island all by yourself. Whether they want to admit it to you or not, everyone you know has sinned. Now, they may present themselves as perfect, but you need to understand God has already dispelled that myth. The word says everyone has sinned. So once you get that revelation, that needs to help you to understand you don't need to automatically disqualify yourself from this job. Because I think sometimes we see job descriptions, you know, in the natural and in the spiritual. And we think to ourselves, oh, I'm not qualified for that. Have you ever been through that? Have you ever done that? Have you ever been looking for a job and you scan and you look at the job description and you go, uh, mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have the, I don't think I possess the, the requisite skills for this particular position. And so we disqualify ourselves before we even put in the application, before we even see if there's an opportunity for us. So this is to get you to understand you ought not do that. You ought not disqualify yourself for this position because everyone who's applying has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Now, let me continue. It says, yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Jesus, Christ Jesus, when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them and in what he would do in this present time. Now catch this. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just. And he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. All right, I need you to get this. You are right in God's sight because you believe in his son. Hear me again. You are right in his sight, even though we're sinners, even though we're yet sinners. The scripture tells us that we are all sinners and we all fall short. But if you have taken this step with me and you have said, you know what? I accept you, Jesus Christ, to be my Lord and to be my savior. Now I am qualified for this position in spite of what I've done, in spite of what I've been through or not, because God still wants to use me for his glory. I love what I'm seeing here um, in, in, the, in the comments. Let me take a look again, because I'm seeing some amazing things, and I'm, I'm excited to see your transparency, because it, whether people want to come clean or not, we, we, we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. Someone said, I know I was a mess, promiscuous spirit, drinking, smoking, scheming, running, running from God. No more. It ain't worth it. Yes, I want to be used for God's will and to help someone else just like I was. You know what? That's what we're about to get to. Let me get to the next scripture because I want you to see something. I want you to see that just like this person came clean, you're not alone. You're not the only one. When God calls you, he will give you what you need to serve him. Let me show you this real quick in 1 Corinthians before we go further. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 through 29, it reads, Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerful, powerless, to shame those who are powerful. 
God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Let me tell you why this qualifies you. I need you to get this. God specializes in taking people and taking things and taking you when you counted yourself out, when other people have counted you out, when they feel like there's nothing good that can come from you. You know, you, you so-and-so's child, you grew up on this side of the street, you know, you got this type of past and you got this type of record and you got this type of baggage. And so in, in the minds of these people, they have assessed you to be worthless. They have assessed you to be powerless. They have assessed that there is someone who is more worthy, more entitled to be used by God. But when you begin to understand what the word says instead of what the world says, then you will begin to step up and say, you know what, I'm ready to accept this job opportunity. You know, I'm tired. I'm done letting people define for me who I am. I am who God says I am. And if God wants to use me, God understands who I am. He knows my background. He knows my strengths. He knows my weaknesses. And if he still has a desire to use me for his glory, I'm not going to let that hold me back anymore. Because I recognize as I'm studying the word with you that he he operates that way. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. He takes the things that people think have no value and make them valuable. He takes the people who don't seem to be powerful and makes them powerful. God is going to do it. So we don't have to figure it out. Well, they're not going to listen to me. Well, they're not going to believe me. Well, they're not going to, they're not going to receive from me. Let me tell you, let God handle all that. You just be ready to go. Now, let me show you something else. This is something that I've always said, and I find it to be true. And I want you to write these scriptures down because we won't get time to study each and every one of them in depth. But these scriptures support the statement that I'm about to make to you right now. And that is, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. Does that make sense to you? Type that for me. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. Type that for me. Tweet that for me. Let me know if you're with me. Let me know if you can receive that today. That he's not waiting on you to get it all together. He ain't waiting for you to get it all right first. You can't do it apart from him anyway. He calls you and he will equip you because you have accepted this call. And so you have this commission. We all have the same commission. He's asking us all to step into this role and he will equip you. He will give you the words to say. He will tell you what you need to say. He will show you where you need to go. He will show you the person who is ready to receive. Do you understand what I'm saying? He will give you what you need. He will equip you because you are indeed called. And then I want you to study. I want you to go back and look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. I want you to go back and look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And I want you to look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. And we'll swing back around if we have time. So I'm trying to keep a, 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 good, a, a, good, a good eye on that. Now, it's so funny because y'all preaching all up in my lesson. I see y'all talking about Noah was a drunk and this and that. Y'all all getting ahead. Slow your roll. I'm getting to that, okay? Because you're right. There are people that we begin to rule out that we feel like they're not qualified. But let me tell you, they are qualified because God said, and that's what I've been saying all this time. So I'm about to give you some examples now. Can you see my screen yet? Can you see my screen? Please let me know if you can see this screen. All right, I'm looking on Facebook to see. Yep, Minister Ayers hand is up. All right, yep, you can see the screen. Thank you, everyone. All right, so <laughs> let's let's go over some of these biblical examples of people who um, had some very noticeable, very um, clear flaws, and yet God saw fit to use. All right, so you there with me? Yes, yes. All right. 
I'm looking at your comments too. I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking. All right, all right, I see you. I see your comments. Amen, amen. Yes. All right, so y'all checking out this list here? Are you seeing this list? Let's go over a few. Yes, thank you, Sister Yvonne. Thank you, Sister Yvonne. She, she, she typed it. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. All right, Sister Christine, my girlfriend from back in the day. I'm so excited to see you here. God is just an amazing God. I just love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. All right, I see you, Sister Lavetta. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, let's look at this list. Noah was a drunk. <laughs> Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. <laughs> Leah was unattractive. Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered. Gideon was scared, I mean, was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy, they were young. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. And Peter denied Christ. Wow, wow, wow. Can you take a look? Do you see? This is just a couple of, this is just a couple samples. Do you see yourself anywhere? Do you see anything about yourself that maybe you thought disqualified you from the Lord using you? Have you been promiscuous? Have you had financial troubles? Have you been afraid or doubtful? Did you feel like you weren't smart enough or you weren't pretty enough or you didn't know enough word? Do you see yourself anywhere in this list? Yep, you see yourself? I see you. I see you. Minister Eric, go ahead and type your comment. I see your hand. You gotta type your comment and I will read it for you. If you see yourself in this list, then maybe this will help you as we've studied this word so far together to recognize that that is a myth. That is a lie from the pit of hell that God can't use you because of your flaws because of your weaknesses, because of the things that you've done in the past. God uses imperfect people. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. That's how he operates. So if you see yourself in any of these people, if you see your, your, your hangups, your holdups, your, 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 your issues on this screen here, then that ought to tell you God still has a plan for you. He still wants to use you. Now, remember, when we started this out, as some of you are joining me a little bit late, it could be in any type of capacity. It is not necessarily saying you have to come forward in a pulpit ministry. God needs to use us in everywhere. He needs the people of God in every position. We talked about positions in high places. We talked about uh, positions in government. We need saved council people and mayors and and governors and, and um, legislature, legislative officials and senators. And come on, y'all, we need, we need safe people to function in businesses. We need safe business owners and, and clerks and workers and, 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 and hairstylists and, and nail technicians and um, janitors. And I'm telling you, we, he needs secret agents in every position. That's why I really love when I function in my marketplace ministry. I don't leave with my title. I don't come out as Pastor Alicia. I just, 
I'm just a secret agent for the Lord. I just work for God. I just go where he says go. I lay low and wait for my assignment. I wait for God to show me who do I need to speak to? Who do I need to bless? Who do, who do I have to speak life into? You don't have to be in the pulpit to do that. God can use you anywhere, anytime, with any person once you realize that he can use you. Once you stop disqualifying yourself. Once you stop thinking, oh, no, 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 they wouldn't receive from me. I've done too much. I, I have too much in my past. Are you starting to receive it yet that God can use you? Let me see what y'all are saying. What are y'all saying to me? Secret agent Turner. Ah! <laughs> y'all like that. Y'all like that secret agent, huh? All right. I see. Minister Eric, let me see what you're saying over here in the questions. Let's see what you guys are saying. Who's over here in the chat? Okay, I see you in the chat. Mr. Eric said, I'd be the least likely. Amen. Amen. And yeah, Minister Eric, and, you, and he said, and there are many others not mentioned. There are several. You know, these are a few. Let me tell you one that I love that is not mentioned. And I'll come back to the anonymous attendee who has a question. We'll talk about that at the end. They're asking about the church, and I'm glad you're asking. We'll give you information about the church. But right now, we're just trying to tell you about our Father. We're just trying to tell you about what the Lord wants to do. The Lord wants to use you. He has, he has need of you, and I want you to hear his message. And we'll, we'll talk about the church, because if you need a place where you can come and receive and hear the word and and all of that, you know, this is definitely a place where we will welcome you. But I want this time right now, I want you guys to focus in on what God is saying and what he is saying to you. So let me tell you about someone who's not on this list who, I don't know if it's right to have a favorite, but the, the, he's kind of my favorite. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's my favorite. I'll go ahead and say that. And that's the Apostle Paul. Now, as I'm telling you about my favorite, you guys tell me in the comments who was your favorite. If you have a favorite, if it was just somebody who just stood out to you, like, wow, like, wow, like you used him like that, Lord, like, wow, you know, and, and that's kind of how I felt about, about Apostle Paul. And I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> Apostle Paul, you know, like Minister Eric was saying, when you talk about the least likely people um, for God to use and how God just really just doesn't focus, just doesn't function the way that we expect him to function. And so we really need to stop trying to box him up all the time um, about what he should do and who he should use and who he should disqualify um, and, and focus on what God wants to do with us. But one person who as I first started to study the word of God, and I want you guys, I want, I want our time together to, um, to intrigue you about God. You know, when I first started reading the word, it wasn't always presented to me in a way that made it um, clear to me how there was something in there that was going to be beneficial to me now. And so as you know, when I do labs, we're, we're looking to show you how to apply the word to your everyday life. And so we're looking at the word and we're delving through it and we're studying it and we're going through it together so that we can see, wow, the word really is alive. And there's so much that applies that I can look to, to give direction and for my decisions for my everyday life. And one of the things that I loved about Paul was Paul was least likely to be used by the Lord. I mean, seriously, if you understood who Paul was, he was the great persecutor. Um, uh, okay, let, let me put it to you this way. Let me try to put it in context. Paul was a persecutor of Christians. And when I say persecutor, I don't mean like in the soft context. I mean in the most violent of contexts. Like he, if you needed somebody to find a Christian and to bring them to justice and to death, he was your guy because he was zealous because he believed that this was not of God. He believed that these Christians were rebellious and he believed with everything in him. Um, he, he, was, he was functioning with a desire actually to be pleasing to God. And so in his mind, he was protecting God. He was doing the right thing. 
And so he started persecuting Christians zealously to the point where Christians avoided, you know, if, if you knew that he was within a radius, you didn't want to be anywhere near Paul, okay? So do y'all get me when, in, in terms of context and when I say the least likely suspect? But when he had what we like to call in the Bible, the Damascus Road encounter, when he met the Lord face to face, when, when the scales fell from his eyes and when he began to realize I've been wrong all along, Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the son of God. This, this movement of these disciples is ordained of God and that this is our, our, our redeemer. Then he flipped just that quick, just that quick. And I think that's why I identify with Paul so much because I feel like that was me. When I was in the world, I was in the world, okay? When, when, when I was in the world, I went gung-ho for the world. But when, I, when the scales fell from my eyes, you, you follow me? When, when, when I had my Damascus Road encounter, when Jesus tapped me on my shoulder and was like, do you see what you're doing? Hello, you, you, you sir, do you realize that although you may not outwardly be considering yourself to be a follower of the devil, that you can't, it is, there is no lukewarm, it's one or the other. You, you either serve me or you don't. You're either in or you're out and you're not serving me. And, and once that Damascus Road encounter occurred, I feel like I was so much like Paul. Like people must have thought I was crazy because I went from one day, you know, out in the world to the next day, completely in the, in the church, like, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. Whatever you want, just as hard as I went for the enemy, doing what he wanted me to do, being under his control and up under his thumb, that much and then some, I'm coming to serve you. I'm, I'm going back to those same people. I'm bringing them back to you. I'm, I'm going back to that same environment. I'm, I'm winning them for you. I'm going to live by example. I want the people who knew me then to see me now and say, well, wait a minute now. I know her. I, I remember how we used to get down. I remember where we used to go. I remember what we used to do. If God saved her, I know he can save me. See, that's what I need you to understand. I want you to stop thinking that you need to be so poly perfect in order for God to use you because for the people God is trying to reach, they need you. They need to see what you have been through and what you did and how God was still able to snatch you from the pits of hell and, and, and wash you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. They need to see that. So you've got to be willing to say, okay, Lord, you can, you can use me as an example. You can make me your poster child. You can, I'm not afraid anymore. Because see, sometimes we're afraid because we're like, well, what if I, I don't want to look stupid. What if I black, what if I backslide? What if I, you know, make a big deal about this and tell everybody to follow Jesus and tell everybody to come to church? And then what if I fall back? Let me tell you something about that. Uh, it's interesting because when I came to Christ, backsliding was not an option. Um, like I said, it was just all in. I was all in in the world. So when I came to the Lord, I was all in. And I have not looked back. But I know that's not everybody's testimony. I know some people struggle and you fall back and you get back up again and you fall back and then you get back up again. But let me tell you something. I strongly believe that if you would go all in, if you would give it everything, there's something about that that makes it where you feel like you can't turn back. There's something about going all in. When you kind of have one foot in and one foot out, it gives you that option to slide back and forth. But when you go all the way in and shut the door, close the door, you know, I like to think of the Red Sea and how they had to cross over and then the sea was closed back up. You can't go back unless you're going to swim for it. You've got to make your life like that. That's how I had to do even with simple things, with my license. When you know my testimony and how I just shut the door, I just stopped renewing my license. I said, no, I can't go back. This is what God wants me to do. I got to focus. And if I keep leaving that little window open, if I leave that little door open, if there's something in your past and you keep cracking the window so that you have a, eh, you know, you can go back a little bit. You can still hear what's going on. It leaves you vulnerable to backslide. And so you've got to say, I got to go all in. 
I got, I've got to focus. I've got to, I've got to really see, God, what are you saying to me in this season? Where do you need me? Where do you want to use me? I feel like we're in the last days. God, what should I be doing? And listen, I don't want you to be afraid. It doesn't mean you're going to have to quit your job. That was my testimony. You may, he needs us everywhere. He needs us everywhere. This is not meaning that once you accept this call, then you're just going to have to, you know, be a nun and lay at the altar all day long and all night long. And no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying accept the call and see what does he need you to do. Maybe he just needs you to start a children's ministry at your church. Amen? Maybe he just needs you to start a PTA at your school and to help the, help the, the other parents who are struggling with how to help their kids. Amen? Maybe he just needs you to just Stay right where you're at in your beauty salon. And then when people, when you're doing their hair and they just praying over them, you're here and they telling you their problems and telling you what they're going through. And maybe he just needs you to stay right where you're at. And while you're washing their hair, you're just praying over them. God, please just God, I send peace in their heads. I send peace in their mind. I bind that spirit of depression. I bind that spirit of, of suicide in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for sending this person in my seat. God, I see the assignment in my life and I'm going to speak encouragement every time they come in. Hallelujah. My market, my ministry was in my uh, marketplace. I was an attorney. And God allowed me to pray with clients. And now God gave me a, a different marketplace where he allows me to work with people and I can openly profess and, and proclaim his goodness and I can allow my gifts and my talents to be a blessing to them. Wherever you're at in your marketplace, wherever you're at in your ministry, God can use you. Whew, okay, let me take a look at these comments. All right, what are y'all saying? Are y'all still talking to me? Are y'all even still here? Anybody still here? Anybody still here? I see you, Minister Eric. What you saying over here, Minister Eric? Oh, yeah, he gave me a list of some other people he added. Minister Eric, you know you're just going to have to take over and just teach one. You're going to have to teach one of these Wednesdays, man. The word of God is in you, brother. I love you. He said, let's get the list. We got Peter the warrior who was quick to strike out. We got Judas the traitor. We got Matthew who would cheat you out of your money. Come on, Minister Eric. <laughs> we got the apostles who all run and hid in the time of danger after Christ's death. We got Mary Magdalene, a prostitute, and was a member of the line of David. We got the family of Christ. God needs people bold enough to go out into the trenches. Amen. I agree with you, Minister Aaron. It's funny though, I wanted to share this with you. I want y'all to read this if you can, if you can see it while I am catching up on the comments because as I was preparing for my lesson tonight, it was funny because I said, okay, some people will disqualify themselves because they feel like they're not holy enough. But then even in my arena, you know, even though I feel like, okay, I'm not just like living in sin, but you still start disqualifying yourself. You know, oh, I'm so young. And then to, to older people, I'm young. Um, and to the young people, I'm old, but you said, oh my goodness, you know, I'm so young. And then, you know, you think of all these other, you just, disqual it, disqualification can, is something that the enemy will try to get you to do no matter who you are is what I want you to see. He will really try you. He will really try to make you feel like, no, nah, it ain't, not you. God, I don't, God I ain't got no assignment for you, <laughs> boo. But you've got to know that is a lie. That is a lie. God, help is wanted. God does have need of you. And um, you are not alone. There, there are many of us who have struggled with this, who have had issues with this, who have uh, had to overcome. <laughs> and let me tell you, it, it, it is a continuous work in progress. So I'm looking at your comments. I can only see some of them the way this is set up. So I, I might have to come back in and just comment on some of these in the, um, the comments, but um, I'm just seeing y'all saying, thank you, Jesus. I remember, I remember Christine said, I remember. Christine, don't be on here telling all my business. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you, you take our sins and you cast them as far as the east is from the west into the sea of forgetfulness. 
thank you that is under your blood. You know, that's what you guys need to understand when the enemy comes and tries to bring your past up to you. When people come and do that to you, it's under the blood. I accepted Jesus. I serve him now. So I understand that you, you, you're thinking of a different time and you're thinking of even a different person, but the Bible says I'm a new creature. So we're not going to deal with that no more. We're going to deal with what I'm doing right now. Would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I'd love to lead you. You just got to be bold. You got to move forward. You got to let God use you. But this letter had me cracking up. I'm not going to have time to read this whole letter. If you can take a, um, a screenshot of it or take your phone and take a picture of it. But this was for, I wanted to throw something in here for the rest of us who are, um, you know, in a different environment. It's not necessarily in the world. It's in the church. But, you know, the church can, can um, disqualify you too. I oftentimes feel my ministry is very different. And so um, I can feel that, that same spirit of religiosity looking down like, uh, you know, you call that a ministry. Um, but I, I understand that that's, you don't have to understand. I still have to do what God called me to do. And it's funny because this letter, when I saw it, I said, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. This letter had me rolling. Um, and it was talking about how we would receive Paul today. In spite of all his accolades, in spite of all his strengths, um, you know, he, I gave you the background of where he came from, but my goodness, if you've never studied Paul, you need to. He preached for Christ like it was nobody's business. I mean, this man, once he put his mind to serve the Lord, he was a force to be reckoned with. And um, he wrote many of our letters to churches and, oh my goodness, he, he was just, he was powerful. He was powerful, powerful, powerful. Um, my notes say he was sensitive to God's leading and despite his strong personality, he always did as God directed. And he's often called the apostle to the Gentiles. My notes say he wrote letters to various churches, which became part of the New Testament. He preached for Christ throughout the Roman Empire on three missionary journeys. And he just transformed. From, he went from a persecutor of Christians to a preacher for Christ. So he's, he's, to me, he's the ultimate example of how you can turn your life around and be used for God's glory. But yet, this letter I thought was the cutest thing ever because it talks about how today he wouldn't be good enough. Uh, let me read one little paragraph. It says, we have received your application to serve, and let's skip down. It says, but we see some serious deficiencies in your character. And then they went on to say, um, you've never had sufficient financial support in your missionary labors. Um, we also heard that you've been a little brash and outspoken with your views and that you publicly criticized Dr. Simon Peter and that you contend strongly with some of our ministers um, and I mean, it goes on and on and on. And as you, it's, it's funny if you understand how Paul was used so mighty, but how, how the very things that God sees as being positive, how the enemy will try to turn it around and make you feel negative about it. So, you know, they talk about how we did our background check and we saw that you were violent to the point of persecuting the church. And at one point, you were even in jail. So listen to that. Now, mind you, I told you he persecuted the church, but that he turned his life around. But imagine him trying to come before a religious body um, nowadays and then reviewing his resume and being like, uh-uh, you, you, you can't serve here. Uh, look at what you've been. Look at what you've done. Look, look, at, look at your track record. No, we don't, we don't want you. You're a little bit too rebellious. Um, you've been to jail, <laughs> but God wanted him. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? And it goes on and on and says, you preach too long. You're not sensitive to the audience. Um, your resume show that you've never been in a place longer than three years. I mean, Paul went, he went where God told him to go. He wasn't worried about what other people thought of him. My goodness, my goodness. I just love what God is trying to share with us tonight. And I pray that you received it because ultimately you've got to understand that he has a position for you. That 
Help is definitely wanted. And that you are qualified. You are more than qualified because he will equip you since he's called you. So let me see what your comments are as we close. I just, I just got a chance to check the time and I see that we have one minute left. So let me see what you guys have. Mm -hmm. I love that. He said, Minister Eric said, Paul did what he earnestly thought was right, but was man enough to accept that he was wrong. I think that's why I loved him so. I'm that, I'm that same way. I'm going to be zealous about it. But if I'm wrong, I'll, okay, I was wrong. It, it's okay. It's okay to admit that you were wrong. It's okay to, to, to convert. And it's okay to repent and turn. That's what I need you to see. It's okay. Repent, turn, 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 turn the page. It's time to go a different direction. It's okay. We're not going to harp on what you used to do. We're not going to harp on where you've been. We're going to repent and we're going to turn and go the right way and be used by God. Amen? He was willing to be taught and instructed. Anybody willing tonight? I'm qualified. Type I'm qualified if, you, if you're willing to accept this position. Type I'm qualified wherever you're at. Even if you're watching this on the replay, just type I am qualified. I'm excited. I'm excited to see you go out. I'm, ex I'm excited to see you go out and make more disciples. I'm excited about what God is doing in your life. So let me give you our clothes so that you can continue to stay connected with us. Again, my name is Alicia Lytle, aka Lady Pastorpreneur. I am a pastor at Exhale Church in Northeast Ohio, where my husband, Pastor Charles Lytle, is the senior pastor. Those who love more information about the church are invited to check out our website. It's at churchforall.org. And I even have something special there for you in case you are wondering, can you lay hold to this position because you have not yet accepted Christ? Have a whole little section there called Becoming a Christian. And I would love for you to check that out. I would love for you to go and to read through that one little page and say that prayer. And when you do, would you please come back and let me know that you decided to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. Now, if you want to stay connected with me as well, I invite you to go to alicialito.com. That's A-L-I-C-I-A-L-Y-T-L-E.com. Once you get there, you'll have an opportunity to join my mailing list so you can get additional invites to other things that may be going on that could be a blessing in your life. And you can also follow me on social media at Lady Pastorpreneur. That's the handle I have for Twitter, uh, for Facebook, and for Instagram. And actually, as I come to think of it, that uh, is not the handle for Twitter because they wouldn't allow me that many characters. So I had to shorten it to Ms. Pastorpreneur. But on Instagram and on Facebook, it is Lady Pastorpreneur. So I invite you to stay connected with us. If you are in the area, if you're out here in Northeast Ohio, if you're around Bedford, Ohio, you just come on out and fellowship with us. We would love to see you. We worship on Sundays at 1130 a.m. If you're looking for a church home, if you have a good church home, you go there and you serve and you let God use you. And you tell your pastor on Sunday, you say, you know what? I'm ready. I know I've been hiding in the pews and I, I know I've been undercover but I'm ready to let the Lord use me. Where do you have need of me? Because God wants to use you in a mighty way. All right, y'all, we're out of time. I love you, and I am ready to see you excel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love you. <laughs> Have a good night, y'all. Bye-bye.